I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Everyone talks about the gut. You know, immunity is a buzzword, inflammation is a buzzword, the gut microbiome is also a buzzword. Everyone's trying to constantly clean out their gut, boost their gut health for all the right reasons, because your gut is important. It controls every single function in the human body, right from your immune system to the regulation of your hormones, to the way you feel up here in your brain, your emotions, your feelings, everything, your reproductive system, sex hormones, digestion, everything is regulated by your gut. So yes, we need to emphasize a process to look after our gut, especially when we're sick or we're recovering from a sickness. So everyone knows about prebiotics, probiotics, people are chasing it, people are buying supplements, people are doing it through natural foods, all good. We're also aware that a natural delivery, a baby born from a natural, via a natural delivery, has a better microbiome. It doesn't mean people born by C-section, they possibly have a little less of the microbiome, they can, they, but they can develop it from their mother's milk and from their diet. So there's no pros and cons of it. There's always pros and cons in all parts of life. We know that antibiotics destroy your gut microbiome, which is why your doctor would prescribe a B-complex and a probiotic along with your antibiotic. Or when you're on heavy medication like chemotherapy or radiation, it's damaging your gut. So you put in what's required to look after the gut. So we know all of these things. We keep Googling concoctions for the gut and colon cleanses and all of these things. Do it if it suits you. Go off gluten, go off dairy, all of that stuff. But today I'm gonna to talk about the one thing over and above, even if you're doing all of this stuff, the one thing that is causing autoimmune conditions through your gut, intestinal permeability, inflammation, brain fog, even depression. There are many causes of depression, but your gut plays a major role in recovering from it. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anything to do with the cognitive uh, brain function in the human body. The one thing that is causing damage to the gut, no matter what we do, probiotics, prebiotics, everything, is stress, chronic stress. Now everyone says, oh, Luke, yeah, but we all have stress. Yes, we all have stress, all of us, you and me. My point is, what are you gonna do about it? When you know it is doing damage to your gut and every cell in the human body, especially your gut, and today we're gonna understand it and break it down, because it's easy to put everything in the name of stress and we feel justified not to do anything about it. But understand, understand this. Every time you go through chronic stress, I'm not talking about day-to-day -day stress. You had a fight with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. You missed a bus, you were late for work. That's little stress. Your body can deal with it. I'm talking about chronic stress. When that fight with your partner goes on and on and on, it becomes bitterness, negativity. Your, that relationship with your boss becomes more and more toxic over time. When your stress goes on for a longer period of time, that is called chronic stress. There is inflammation in the gut. Immediately your microbiome in your gut, which is trillions and trillions of bacteria, they start to change. Your microbiome is influenced by your environment inside of you and outside of you. How many of you, there are so many people who say, hey Luke, you know, I can eat bread when I'm in Europe, when I'm in New York, I can eat bread, I don't get bloated. But when I'm in India, I get bloated. Okay, it's not always the difference in the quality of the bread, it's also the change in environment. Okay, people when they're on a holiday, they don't get the gut symptoms that they get when they're not on a holiday. Different environment. Your environment impacts every part of your gut, which means if there is stress in your environment, it will impact your gut no matter how clean your diet is, which is why the approach to health is always integrative. It's not just nutrition, it's not just exercise, it's not just sleep, it's everything. Your emotional wellness, what's happening in you, what's happening in your relationships, what's happening from your past, what's happening in your present, how much you're thinking of the future, all of this, because they're living organisms living in you. If you as a human being can react to everything that's happening around you, Everything inside you also has the same reaction. It's not just you, you're made up of trillions of cells. You react, your cells react. It's as simple as that. So yes, we're gonna go into solution mode very soon, but now we're gonna connect with autoimmune conditions because everyone is autoimmune cannot be cured. Yes, it cannot be cured because it's not a disease. It's a condition that can go into remission when your immune system stops to attack you. So sometimes there's a very strong genetic trigger which maybe you have to live with it for your lifetime. I don't know, but you can't say you have to unless you've tried many, many things. But you cannot leave your gut out of your recovery plan for an autoimmune condition. 
whatever it is, whether it's a Hashimoto's, it's a multiple sclerosis, it's a vitiligo, it's psoriasis, it's eczema, it's lupus, whatever it is, you cannot leave the gut out of your recovery plan, including depression. Now let's understand why. When you get chronically stressed, your microbiome begins to change. There's inflammation. You have a gut wall, your small intestinal wall. Think of it as a thin fishing net with small holes. Perfect. Over time, because of inflammation, okay, undigested food, acidic food reaching your small intestine and your microbiome being unable to digest these foods. So you have undigested food. Okay, these holes in the fishing net start to get bigger and bigger. Okay, so now certain metabolites or certain food particles that are meant or toxins that are meant to pass out of your system, small intestine to the large intestine to the rectum and you poop it out. They squeeze through that thin fishing net and they get into your blood. Not supposed to be there. So what do you think happens? Think about it. what do you think is going to happen? You're right. Your immune system rises to the occasion to protect you. It's a foreign invader. The same way a virus gets into your system, bacteria, a germ, a pathogen, the immune system wakes up. It's never recognized as foreign invader before. The inflammatory response turns on. Most people are now familiar with a cytokine storm because of COVID. There are cytokines which are generated. Not a bad thing until they start to attack you. Okay? Now some of these, it's called molecular mimicry. Some of these metabolites or molecules that have entered your blood, some of them resemble your thyroid gland. Immune system attacks, Hashimoto's thyroid. Your skin, eczema, psoriasis. Your joints, arthritis, lupus, many parts of your body, multiple sclerosis, the myelin sheet that covers your nerves, leading to all the muscle uh, discoordination and everything else, okay? You can treat all of these things, anti, uh, sorry, steroids, immunosuppressants, whatever it is, but the root cause in most cases, if it's not a strong gene, is your gut intestinal permeability and that's why science is documenting this today and putting it in recovery plans. So now the root cause is your gut. Fine, antibiotics, pre prebiotics, probiotics, take care of all of that stuff. But if you're chronically stressed, do you understand now what is happening in your body? So you launch an immune attack on your own body. Your own immune system starts to attack you. Now, yes, you can put it in remission in most cases by removing the triggers. So let's say I'm gluten intolerant, I'm celiac. Every time I eat gluten, gluten is inflammatory. It damages my gut and which is why I have all of those symptoms. I remove gluten, I allow my gut wall to heal by putting it through a building process. Guess what, if I don't put gluten back in my diet, I'm not gonna have an autoimmune attack again. The same thing with dairy, which is why you usually first remove dairy and you, you, you remove gluten, which are highly inflammatory foods. Sometimes people find I'm allergic to eggs. So they remove eggs and they get better. So that's the process, but come back to stress. And that's why most people understand there is a gut-brain axis. Your gut is called the enteric nervous system. It is the second brain because it is connected with your brain. When you're nervous, why do you feel it in your stomach? You should feel it only in your head, right? But you feel it in your stomach. You have butterflies in your stomach. You've had that gnawing kind of a thing. You feel like pooping. Some people run off when they're nervous like an IBS, classic example. You're nervous, stressed out, Gut gets inflamed, you need to pass emotion. Inflammatory response, you run to the toilet a couple of times in a day. It shows you that the root cause is also stress, which means we have to look after our stress if we want to get better. Now, gut-brain axis. A lot of people with depression, okay, I'm not taking away from your depression, but you have to look at your gut because a lot of the serotonin that controls the way you feel in your brain is regulated and produced in your gut. If you have a problem in your gut, it affects your brain. It's as simple as that for all the women out there who have PCOS, endometriosis, hormonal imbalances, and men as well. Hormonal imbalances, again, where are hormones being regulated from? The gut. So if you have a problem in the gut, it is affecting the main communication and regulation. You can take oral contraceptives, everything. Symptomatic approach. Take it if you need to as a crutch. But if you are not looking at the root cause of healing your gut, you are going to live with these problems. And these problems are going to grow into something more serious. You do not want to be left with a problem in the gut that, become, that can become inflammatory, colorectal cancers, you know, Crohn's and all of these things. Fine, you have it. It's suggesting a change in the way you eat, sleep, move, think. A symptom is not always a bad thing. A symptom is a warning. It's telling you change. If you make the change, great. 
It's also, it's, but most people see the symptom as, oh, give me a medication, suppress me. Take the medication if you have to, I'm not against that. Our own team medicates people if it's necessary, but parallelly, you need to change your lifestyle so that slowly the symptoms reduce and you can get off the medication safely in a safe way. So coming back to stress, everyone's still thinking that, oh, but what do I do? The first thing you do is change your mindset about stress and listen to this very, very clearly. Stress is not that person in your life. It's not that thing in your life. It's not that event in your life. Stress is the way you relate to that person, that thing, or that event. It's as simple as that. And I'll prove it to you right now because you can put 10 people in a room with three problems and all 10 people would react differently. Some will get stressed, some will get motivated, some will get inspired with challenge, some will just be no big deal. How come? It's supposed to be stress, right? No, but it's the way everyone relates to it. So today you make a list of the top three things or people that stress you out in your life and your homework is how can I change the way I relate to them? You can't get rid of a person sometimes. You're stuck in a toxic relationship. For whatever reason, you cannot get out of it. You've got to change the way you relate to it. You, would, you don't want to leave your job even though your boss is giving you a hard time? Fine. Change the way you relate to your boss. But if you keep allowing the stressor to affect you, you're going to keep on having chronic stress in your life. It's as simple as that. You can meditate, do pranayama, chant, exercise. You'll feel better for the time that you're doing that. You still have to do the work of changing the way you relate to things. Your meditation is not a tool to remove your stressors from life. Your meditation is a tool to help you see mindfully the changes that you should make. Likewise with your chanting. You can't go on chanting away your problems. No. Chanting is to bring you into center. It's to align you with your center so that now you can see clearly from a space of clarity everything that you need to do. Don't use meditation and chanting as tools to get rid of your problems. They don't work that way. Your problems will always be there. You get rid of two problems today, you'll have four maybe tomorrow or a month later. So you can't go on through your life trying to stop problems from coming in, but you can go on trying to build yourself to change the way you relate to a person, a thing, or an event. And you need to do this for your gut. As simple as that. Because your immune system, 75 to 80%, everyone knows this for the longest time, okay, is controlled by your gut. So you can take turmeric pills, you can take your medicated ghees and you can take whatever you want, vitamin C's, but if you have poor gut health, doesn't matter what you're doing for your immune system because scientifically, the statement is clear. Your gut is responsible for training your immune system into action. We don't need a strong immune system. We need a smart immune system. A smart immune system that can recognize that cancer cell that's gone rogue, that can recognize that virus that is trying to turn on the wrong switches and turn off the right switches. Uh, a smart immune system to re recognize a gene that is trying to trick the body or manifest too early. That's what we need. And that is your gut. Don't complicate your gut. Yes, it's very complicated. Even scientists don't understand. There are trillions of strains that are coming up every single day. We don't understand. It's like a diverse colony of different plants and weeds and everything is needed in the ecosystem. The good and the bad. They have to work and coexist. You can't just have the good gut bacteria. You also have to have the bad one. When there's a fermentation, people are, look, I don't want fermentation in my gut. Well, you need fermentation in your gut because when certain bacteria ferment certain foods, they become your short chain fatty acids, which is required for every part of human functioning. So it's not a bad thing. Over fermentation is a bad thing. When your body doesn't have the right bacteria to break down your food, that's a bad thing. So number one, you can do all the pre's, the pros, everything. Number one, your stress. Learn how to change the way you relate. Number two, your sleep. If you are sleep deprived, you automatically put your body into stress, chronic stress, whether you like it or not. Your body and your conscious mind doesn't care about what your deadlines are, whether you wanna build a unicorn company, if you wanna become a billionaire. It doesn't care about these things, okay? All it cares about, survival. Do I have what I need? Does my microbiome have what it needs to maintain this diverse population? Which again is rest, recovery, lower inflammation as quickly as possible, the right nutrients, the right movement, the right amount of relaxation. That's up to you. So you can make your gut protocol super complicated or you can start with the basics. And most people, that's why, people who have gut issues, I always ask them, 
when was your last holiday? And he said, oh, Luke, it was about, you know, one year ago before COVID and stuff. I said, did you have these same symptoms when you were on holiday in the Maldives? They said, absolutely not. There you go. Environment was different. Were you relaxed on that holiday? Absolutely, yes. Were you sleeping well? Yes. That's your simple answer. It starts with internal, external environment. So you can chase complication as much as you want, but never forget simplicity and never forget the basics. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.